Up until recently, the only way to get good quality out of an original Xbox was to use a component cable. I actually use an XOSVP or Xbox Open Source Video Project adapter, which is a cable that allows you to get component video and digital audio out of an Xbox. My main problem with the XOSVP is it only outputs optical audio, which means that I have to use a digital to analog converter in order to connect it to my OSSC. And as you can see here, that results in a huge mess of cables that is really kind of ridiculous. It's time for me to throw all that stuff in the trash because Make Megahertz has designed an internal Xbox HDMI mod. The Xbox HDMI mod allows you to output up to 720p and 1080i and it's internal which means all you have to do is connect an HDMI cable to the port in the back of the Xbox and connect it to your TV. If you've watched my channel in the past, you know that I for one accept our new HDMI overlords. So let's jump over to the bench and I'll show you how to do it. It's important to know that this installation might be different for different versions of the Xbox. My version is a 1.0 Xbox. I suggest that you check out the Xbox HDMI installation guide just to verify that there are no differences for your model. The first thing we have to do is open up the console. Before we do anything with the board, let's go ahead and tin the points on the Xbox HDMI. Then go ahead and put this aside. Since this is a 1.0 console, we're going to need to install this little QSB on the bottom side of the board. The QSB is gonna live somewhere right around here by this hole here. So the first thing that we're gonna do is do a dry fit of this QSB. So it looks like we're gonna need to solder these two capacitors here and there. And we're gonna need to solder these three test points here, there, and down here. Now that we know where the QSB is gonna go, let's just go ahead and put a tiny bit of fresh solder on all of those points. So we know we need to at least go to this capacitor here. And this one here but also these points next to this capacitor here and here. But the last test point might be a little bit hard to find where it is, so let's put this thing back. It's gonna be right there, this point right there. Let's go ahead and tin up these two pads on the QSB. All right, now let's try to solder this QSB where it goes. I think I want to start with this capacitor right here because it looks like it's the biggest and the most in the way. We can always clean it up with some flux afterwards, but we just want to get it in place. Now I'm going to add some flux and go ahead and solder the rest of these points. And then we can touch up that last capacitor. All right, then we're going to flip it over. And on the top side of the board, we're gonna look for a tiny little capacitor right here by this big electrolytic capacitor and replace it with one of these 47 ohm capacitors that came with the kit. Let's go ahead and add some solder to both sides. And now we should be able to just heat up that capacitor, go back and forth between the two ends and remove it. 
now that this capacitor has been removed, we have to replace it with one of those 47 ohm capacitors that came in the kit. It's almost as small as the tip of an X-Acto knife. Okay, my strategy is gonna be to just get some flux down and hold the capacitor with tweezers and just try to tack it in place with the solder that's already on the board. Okay, that kind of worked. Now let's turn it over. Try to get some solder on the opposite side. Okay, not too much. It's possible that you could heat this back up again and it could fall right off. So just be very careful, go very quickly, but try to get a good solid connection on both sides of the cap. I can't quite tell what's happening here, so I'm gonna go ahead and clean it up with some isopropyl alcohol. I think I did a pretty good job here, but our next step is gonna go ahead and test our work. Let's go ahead and verify this QSB. There's this handy guide that will be able to check some of the points here on the video encoder. I'm gonna use my multimeter, set it to ohms. The first measurement we're gonna to have to do is seven pins over on the top side of the encoder here is clock in. And we're gonna compare that to ground, which is on this close side of this big electrolytic capacitor. And it should be under 200 ohms. Okay, it's about 112 ohms. So that's good. The next reading is gonna be from the same point on the encoder here, but against video one V5, which is the left side of this little capacitor here. Again, that looks like it's 112 ohms. The last connection we need to do is field on the encoder, which is four pins down on this side here. Again, compared to that left pad on this little capacitor. And that should be under 100 ohms. Okay, that's just exactly 100 ohms. It says less than or equal to 100 ohms, so I'll call that a win. All right, everything looks good at the QSB. Let's move on. I wasn't originally planning to remove this heat sink, but now that I think about it, this console is 20 years old, so this thermal paste is that old. So let's go ahead and try to take this heat sink off and clean up any thermal paste. Gross. All right, so I think this is the GPU and that's the CPU or maybe they're backwards, but let's worry about getting this heat sink off first. I think we have to undo the bracket on this side first. There's these little clips here that we should just be able to bend down and kind of forward. Oh, that's really annoying. This just should just come right off. It doesn't easily come off, so we might have to heat this up. Let's take this bracket off, same thing. We just have to undo the clip here. That's not great. Anyways, let's worry about trying to get these heat sinks off. Wow, this CPU one just came right off. So if we can try to twist the GPU one off a little bit, and I'm not gonna put too much pressure on this. I'm gonna get my heat gun, and I'm gonna try to heat this up a little bit. Whew, that got hot. Be very careful with this heat gun because you could definitely either melt parts or even knock some components off the board. That is gross. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and clean this up with isopropyl alcohol off screen, both the chips here and both of the heat sinks. For now, let's turn our attention to this AV port here. Let's flip it over. It looks like there's a bunch of little pins right here and then two larger pins here and there. I'm gonna add a little bit of solder to each one of these points all over the AV, and then I'm gonna use my desoldering gun to desolder all the pins.
After that, it looks like there are quite a few pins still not desoldered. So I'm gonna add some fresh solder to those ones and give it another whack with the desoldering gun. Okay, I think I have everything cleaned out. This one right here in particular was really a pain in the butt and I kind of bent the via a little bit, but everything seems to be okay. There will be a few points that probably are near ground planes and they need more heat than other places. You'll find out pretty quickly which ones won't desolder easily. So just take your time, keep going back and adding new solder and keep trying with the desoldering gun. My desoldering gun is too small to remove the solder from these two pins here. So I'm gonna use my solder sucker. Whoa, that is a huge via. I think that's pretty much everything. Just go ahead and use some tweezers and make sure that every single pin can move freely. These ones up here are clips, I think, so we might have to heat those up when we remove this port here. Here's a tip, just make sure you're holding it in the right spot because these AV ports are actually wide. I had my finger on this black edge part here and obviously the port's not gonna lift up. So you need to have your fingers over on the edge in order for this AV port to move. Now I'm gonna heat up these pins here and I'm gonna try to wiggle the port free. As you can see, these ones in the bottom here stuck a little bit, so I had to heat those ones up as well to get them out of the board. But at the very least, we got the port out here, so let's clean this up with some isopropyl alcohol. Okay, the next step is going to be to solder some jumper wires on the bottom side of the AV port here. I like to hold on to capacitor legs when I cut them off, so I'm gonna use these capacitor legs as the jumper wires for this AV port. We're gonna follow the diagram in the instructions, and the first jumper is gonna go between pins 11 and 12, which are, if you count three over from the top, in the corner here, one, two, three. 11 is the next row. So in between this via and that via, we're gonna put a jumper. I'm just gonna put some solder in the bottom via. And I'm gonna carefully tin this leg here. And then I'm gonna solder this jumper in. Then I'm gonna take some side cutters and cut the leg a little bit higher than the top hole. I'm gonna go ahead and solder into the top hole. I'm gonna do the same thing to pin 13 and 14, which is just the next column over. This was more difficult than I thought it was gonna be just because of how close these two wires are together. The best strategy that I found was to actually tin all four of these points first, just get the component legs on the board and solder the wires to the board. And then afterwards, just bend the component legs up and cut them off. All right, now it's time for the hardest part of the install and that's installing the flex cable to the video encoder. I switched to my J-tip now. This should make this part of the install go easier. Let's Let's start off with this big side here. So I'm gonna turn my Xbox this way. Let's go ahead and start by tinning both sides of the flex cable. Make sure that you haven't bridged any of these pins on the flex cable before you move on. All right, like I said, we're gonna start with this big side here. There isn't a pin on the flex cable there, but the edge of the flex cable is gonna be two pins over from the left of the encoder down here. When you're lining up this part of the flex cable, you also wanna try to line up this part up here. The top pin on this part of the flex cable is gonna be one pin down from this side of the encoder. So just make sure that when you're lining this part up, you also line this part up as well. First thing I'm gonna do is get a small bit of solder, like a really small bit of solder on my my soldering iron and add some flux and we're gonna go ahead and tack down this left side of the big part of the flex cable. Then we're gonna do the right side. Same thing, just get a little bit of solder and line it up and tack it down. Now we can do some drag soldering in the middle here to solder the rest of the connections.
If you get a big mess of solder, you can always get a clean piece of solder wick and try to clean it up. I'm gonna turn this sideways because it's a little bit difficult. I got mine to look like this. This was kind of difficult because all this solder is lead free and it doesn't really mix well with leaded solder. Instead of drag soldering, I kind of made a motion like pulling away from the encoder. So add some flux and pull the solder away from the encoder. That ended up working a lot better for me. With this big part out of the way, let's go ahead and solder the side here. I know I said to line this up ahead of time, but I think if you get this lined up great, then this side is gonna be off by a little bit. The top piece that we have to solder here is one pin down from the top right of this side. All right, so that top piece is down. Now I'm gonna tack the bottom of it. And now I'm gonna do my pull technique to kind of get these ones tacked down better. And that's what I ended up with. All right, now we're gonna work on this one. The leftmost pin that needs to be soldered on this thing is gonna go six pins over from the left of the encoder. Here's what mine looks like. This side is probably the most difficult because it's hard to judge how far over you are from the left there. It gets misaligned very easily, so it's hard to hold it with the tweezers and get it in place. After that's finished, let's go ahead and clean up this whole area with some isopropyl alcohol. Now we're going to install all the wiring for the Xbox HDMI. The first wiring we're gonna do is up here, the five volts and SPDIF by the AB connector. Let's go ahead and tin the points. These wires are gonna go straight up this way. Next, we're gonna move the ferrite bead, which is up here, this little piece that looks like a capacitor right there. We're gonna remove that. Next, we're gonna do ground, which is the right pad of this big electrolytic capacitor. Next, we're gonna do 1V8, which may be 1.8 volts. I'm not really sure, but it's the bottom side of this capacitor right here. Next is ground two, which is the bottom side of this vertical capacitor here. Next, we're gonna do SDA and XCL, which is coming from this chip right here. And for this, we're gonna use the ribbon cable that was included. Just like that. As much as I wanna test the system right now, we have to do something else before that. The kit includes this HDMI port piece, which is gonna to have to go inside of the bottom shell underneath the RF shielding, which means I'm gonna take this entire bottom shell apart. Now is actually a pretty good time to look at your power supply. If you have a 1.0 Xbox, I would take a look at these solder joints on your power adapter here. I've already done this fix on my Xbox, but for me, these joints here that connect the power adapter to the power supply here were cracked, so I had to reflow them with solder. So while this is out, take a look and see if you need to do this on yours. This 3D printed piece is gonna have to go in this slot here, but behind the shield here. So we could take the shield off and then put this piece behind it.
probably not the way you have to take this out, but I don't care because I got it. All of that worked just so that we could do this. Done. Looks pretty cool though. That was extremely painful. I wish that there was a better design where this could go somehow on the inside. So that way you didn't have to take this whole thing apart just to put that little piece there. Now we can finally put the motherboard back in the case. I'm not gonna screw everything back in. However, before we put the Xbox HDMI in, we have to screw this screw in here. Then this black spacer piece is gonna go here. Now we can finally install the Xbox HDMI. This doesn't seem very tight in there. Oh, probably because I have to use the screws that came in the bag. That's a thousand times better. Now let's go ahead and solder all of these wires into the Xbox HDMI. And that's all the wiring. Only thing left to do besides put the heat sinks on is put this flex cable in. That's it for the mod itself. Now it's been a few days since I've done this. I got a new clip from eBay and it actually came with some replacement heat sinks. I got this thermal paste remover, so let's go ahead and try to see if we can use this to take the thermal paste off of these heat sinks. So let's take some toilet paper. It says to saturate the thermal paste for about 30 seconds. Let's go ahead and do that. I feel like the GPU one will take a little bit more effort, so let's try to work on this CPU heat sink. The CPU clean up pretty good. I'll go over this with some isopropyl alcohol just to clean up any of that residue. Now I just have to worry about this guy. An hour later and scrubbing back and forth between that stuff and isopropyl alcohol, these things are pretty clean now. So let's bring back the Xbox. Gonna clean everything quickly with some isopropyl alcohol. I've got some MX4 thermal paste. Not really sure how much to use. I've put thermal paste on CPUs, so. I don't know, that, maybe that much. Put this here. Put this clip on. All right, that's the GPU. And I'll put a little less on this one. Okay, now we put this in. We'll put this fan back on. Only one thing left to do, and let's put it together and test it out. As I was trying to put everything back together, I noticed that this red wire right here, the point. Uh, 5 volts or 1.6 volts, whatever, this red cable here. This corner piece here of the disk drive was hitting that red wire. So I think what I have to do is have the red wire come out here a little bit more and maybe wrap underneath the mod and go over here. Let's get a longer wire and run it from this point here back to that capacitor down there. All right, now let's try to see if this disk drive will fit over it. Okay, that's a lot better. So yes, you're gonna need to put your cable like this in order for some of these disk drives to be able to fit on there right. 
Overall, the Xbox HDMI is a pretty fun mod. I didn't run into any problems other than that wire at the end that was getting in the way of the disk drive, but after I moved that out of the way, everything went pretty smoothly. Dan Coons has announced that there's going to be an Xbox Digital, so I'm looking forward to that mod and seeing how it compares to the Xbox HDMI. If you liked this tutorial or found it helpful, please give it a like and get subscribed because I try to get all the latest mods and show you how to do them. I'll see you in the next video.